Welcome back. Uh, moving on from electron domain geometry, we continue to molecular geometry. So, non-bonding pairs are invisible. You remove a non-bonding pair, you're basically vanishing one of the electron domains, and you can only see what's still there. Okay. So the electron domain that's invisible, the non-bonding pair, is still going to be present. It's still going to take up space. It's just that we can't see it. Okay. It's like a, you try to step into a conspicuous gap in a crowd, and you run into Harry Potter because he's running around in his cloak, breaking the rules, the annoying little jerk. Okay. Now, the other thing to remember is that non-bonding pairs are bigger than bonds. They take up more space, so they sort of squish uh, the other electron domains together. So now we look at the big old chart I've made here. This is only half the chart on this page. The remainder of the chart is on the next page. Okay. So this left-turn column is the number of electron domains. So we'll be starting with three and working our way up to six electron domains. Then we have the number of non-bonding pairs. And then we have, you know, sort of a generic molecular formula. So AB3 would be something like boron trifluoride. Then we have the electron domain geometry. So if you have three electron domains, it's trigonal planar. If you have four electron domains, it's tetrahedral. Then this column here, uh, in BP, that's saying where do the non-bonding pairs go? You'll notice that most of those say Na or non-applicable. And that's because, for the most part, um, all of the positions are equivalent, and it doesn't matter where the, like, the non-bonding pairs go. But once you look at uh, five and six electron domains, it does matter, sometimes. And then we look at the molecular geometry. So that is just the name that we give to the shape that's uh, formed by the atoms that, are, that we can still see. Okay? And then on the far right, we have an example a molecule that matches that geometry. So our first example is boron trifluoride. So BF3, that's a lowercase f, fluorine has it, uppercase f. Okay, so boron trifluoride. Uh, boron gives us three electrons, fluorine gives us 21. Seven times three is 21. Okay. So, so three plus 21 is 24 electrons. Boron, one bonds to each of the fluorines, uses up six electrons, leaving us with 18. And then two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons go on fluorine as non-bonding pairs. And then boron is perfectly happy as it is. It doesn't need to make double bonds because it, it can go with only six electrons. It's an exception to the octet rule. So this has one, two, three electron domains and zero non-bonding pairs on boron. So its electron domain geometry is just trigonal planar. It's a flat triangle. And its molecular geometry, it's exactly the same. 3 minus 0 is trigonal planar. Okay. So when there are no non-bonding pairs, it's really very straightforward. Um, the molecular geometry and electron domain geometry are going to be exactly the same. It's only when there aren't non-bonding pairs that you're going to find any sort of difference. So our next example is sulfur dioxide, so SO2. Okay. So sulfur, we look at our periodic table, is over here, gives us six valence electrons, and so does oxygen, right above it. So six plus 12, there are two oxygens, is 18 electrons. Now we have sulfur in the middle, we draw an oxygen on either side. That uses four electrons, giving us 14. So now we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons used up, leaving two more to go on sulfur as a non-bonding pair. 
Sulfur is not yet happy. We need to convert a pair of electrons into a not or into a, excuse me a double bond on sulfur. So now sulfur is happy. And of course, thanks to resonance, it's actually like that. Okay, so now we have a non-bonding pair. The electron domains, still three, one, two, three. But we have a pair of non-bonding electrons. Okay. So the electron domain geometry is still going to be trig planar. Okay. Electron domain geometry doesn't change just because there's a non-bonding pair. But the molecular geometry is 3 minus 1 equals bet. Okay. So what that means is here we have the electron domain geometry. Okay. Here's a double bond, here's an oxygen, here's an oxygen, and here's sulfur in the middle. But this electron pair, this non-bonding pair, is invisible. So when you actually draw it out, all you see is this. Sulfur bound to a pair of oxygens. And the non-bonding pair up here is invisible. We don't see it. So that's why we call it bent. It's just a, a broken line, a bent line. Okay. Now, I said earlier, non-bonding pairs take up more space. So these two oxygens have been squished together. Okay. The non-bonding pair is squeezed them in, pushed them together. So this bond angle, so oxygen, sulfur, oxygen bond angle, is less than, less than 120 degrees. Okay. Not a whole lot less. It's probably going to be something like 118 degrees. Okay. So it's close to 120 degrees. But it's still fairly significant because that means that this bond here is 122, or sorry, it's 121, and this bond here is 121. Okay. The non-bonding pair has gotten a lot more space at the expense of those two oxygens. And that does it for uh, the three electron domains because if you take away uh, more than one, you're just going to be left with two atoms bound together. Uh, and that's very, very straightforward. So our next up is going to be 4 and 0. For that, our example is uh, CH4, or methane. Okay, so carbon gives us 4. Uh, each hydrogen gives us 1. There are 4 of them. So that gives us a total of eight electrons. Carbon bonds to each of the four hydrogens. That uses up all eight electrons. And now we're happy, because carbon has eight electrons. Hydrogen only needs two. It's another exception. So we have four electron domains and zero non-bonding pairs. So our electron domain geometry is tetrahedral, and our molecular geometry is identical tetrahedral. Okay. So it's just that guy right there. Bond angles, 109.5 degrees. Next up, we have 4 and 1, and our example for that is ammonia. Ammonia is pretty much our go-to example for this one. It's the best. So in H3, 5 plus 3 equals 8 electrons. And there we have it. Three bonds, one non-bonding pair. So we still have four electron domains. There's our one non-bonding pair which means our electron domain geometry is tetrahedral. Okay. So here we have nitrogen in the middle, hydrogen, 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 and then up here, our non-bonding pair. That nitrogen's hard to read, and now it's not. Okay. 
But our molecular geometry, after this non-bonding pair disappears, looks like this. Our three hydrogens are still pushed down because that non-bonding pair is still there. Okay, and this is called trigonal pyramidal. It is no longer uh, tetrahedral. It is just a trigonal pyramid because you know you put in lines down here at the bottom, and you know you've got a, a pyramid with a triangular bottom. You squashed the tetrahedron. And remember, the non-bonding pair takes up more space, so the bond angles have changed. Instead of being 109.5, they're 107 degrees. And our next example, the last of the tetrahedral geometries, is going to be water. Water, again, is our go-to example. Okay. Run out of space on this. So now uh, H2O, you have two electrons from hydrogen, six electrons from oxygen is eight total. So O, H, H, two bonds uses up four electrons, leaving four electrons that go on oxygen as non-bonding pairs. And that uses everything up. And we're done with that. So now we have still four electron domains, two bonds, two non-bonding pairs. So our electron domain geometry is still tetrahedral. Uh, and just to mix it up, I've drawn it, you know, sort of mirror image. Doesn't really matter, you can draw a tetrahedron either way. All right, so there's oxygen at the middle. Here we have our two hydrogens, and there are our two non-bonding pairs. These guys are going to disappear, leaving us with a molecular geometry bent. Oxygen, water, hydrogen, hydrogen. And then you know, your two invisible non-bonding pairs floating around up above them. And once again, our two non-bonding pairs take up more space, meaning that this is 104.5 degrees. So every time you add a non-bonding pair, it's going to squish everything closer and closer together. Okay. So we went from 109 for methane to 10, oh, sorry, 109.5 for methane to 107 degrees for ammonia to 104.5 for water. All right. So now we're done with the uh, tetrahedral geometries. Oh, I forgot to write down the name. This guy is bent again. It's just a bent line. Okay, just nice and simple. No fancy name there. And that, that definitely does it for the, uh, uh, the tetrahedral geometries. From there, we will move on in the next lecture to our uh, trigonal bipyramidal geometries.